originally, I, I was thought I was going to be an artist who um, travelled in wild places and made things and sold the photographs for huge amounts of dollars, you know, but that actually never happened. So I, I was slowly asked by people to come to their landscapes and make something, and they were, you know, going to pay me to do that. Renowned English land artist Chris Drury has been invited to the Montalvo Art Center in Saratoga to create a series of works on the property. After scouting over 175 acres of trails and gardens, Chris has found a site for one installation in the redwood groves above the center. For the next three weeks, this redwood tree will be home to Chris and his two assistants. The plan is to construct a spiraling vortex of willow branches that stretch 60 feet down all the way to the ground. One of the first things I asked the helpers was, how do you get on with heights? <laughs> and, and luckily one, one is a climber and they both don't mind heights. You've got a bit of string or something? Just here. And as the days wear on, your body and your mind adjust to the height and you instinctively put your foot in the right place. I can see now how people on, on high-rise buildings, how they become so blasé about it. Uh, is it going up? It's going above it. In the tree, you've got, you've got sap moving up from the roots out, to the, uh, out the needles and it's flowing up this trunk. And it's flowing... Um, not in a straight line, it, fo it follows this spiral. I'm somebody who tries to make connections between people and the earth that we live on. And those connections are what I'm interested in. Chris has spent his entire career traveling the world, creating structures that are visual essays on the relationship between human communities and their environments. His works reflect the cultural and environmental idiosyncrasies of each location, as well as his own artistic sensibilities. Many artists have worked in the landscape since the 60s. Chris's work, as with many European artists, such as Andy Goldsworthy or Richard Long, uh, Hamish Fulton, approach it from a gentler perspective of their relationship and their uh, manipulations in the landscape. This is different from the earthworks, say, of Robert Smithson that went into the middle of nowhere and aggressively changed the landscape tremendously. In addition to his redwood vortex, Chris has also designed another series of works inside a gallery space on the Montalvo grounds. I work both in the gallery and outside because all parts of my work have this inner outer quality to it. And microcosm, macrocosm. I proposed the idea of fingerprints made from an earth pigment, actually picked up from behind the galleries. The acetate's projected onto the wall, and Nalini is, is painting latex onto the white areas that are projected, and that will act as a mask. Um, so when she paints on the, the first color of dirt, you can just wash that on and then the latex can be peeled off later. When you put them together and you begin to link the patterns, you begin to break down the individual and you get something that's sort of like a flowing river. I've been looking at um, the way blood moves, and particularly in the heart. It moves in a cardiac twist, which is a double spiral. And you see that also in the fingerprint. I was going to respond to the place and the space, but still talk about those connections. It's day 25 on the Redwood Vortex installation. Chris and his crew have endured bouts of heavy rain and are still struggling with unforeseen problems in the weaving process. Yeah, we've got a mistake here oh, yeah, somewhere. That one's a mistake right there, yeah? Because of the mounting weight of the structure, they have decided to start building from the bottom up. At this point in the process, it is unclear whether the two halves will mesh together seamlessly, as Chris had originally planned. Can you give that a yank? Is, is that far enough in, Carl? I, th I think creativity itself is a survival mechanism, whereby the, the ones that survive are the ones that can 
think their way around problems. And that's what happens up there, three people thinking their way around problems. It's, it's a pretty cool experience to be in there weaving and getting kind of blood, sweat, and tears going. And at some point, it really became an idea that, you know, finishing the sculpture was possible, that we were actually going to get there. After a month of nearly non-stop work, Drury and his assistants have finally completed the Redwood Vortex. And Montalvo has opened its doors to the public. The rain was terrible and it was quite dangerous, but we got, we sort of worked as one really. Chris has also assembled another piece made from sticks and sequoia pine needles. Like the fingerprint piece, this is inspired by the cardiac twist found in the human heart. I also felt that it needed to smell of the forest, so we collected the uh, leaves and twigs from the bays and shredded them. When you approach it, you suddenly begin to see it looming through the trees and you think, it's huge, you know, it's huge. Where does it end? Because you, you can't see the beginning or an end. And then you get that incredible world that we've achieved. Every stick is under tension, so it's a weave. So that the sticks are, are what are holding it together. Well, I just noticed the trunk going back and forth when you yeah. built, did it ever go enough to where it would hit the outside? You need a very strong wind for it to move a lot. I mean, it does move quite a bit in a strong wind, but. The thing is flexible too, so... I think the Redwood piece, it's done something to that space, and, and therefore I think that the three of us have done something quite interesting there. One of the Indian artists here said how it... he'd never realised how fragile the forest was until he looked at that piece. Mm -hmm. 